What's the word, y'all? Let's talk about the most intriguing player on all 30 NBA teams. At least the most intriguing player, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? For different reasons. Uh, because there's 30 teams, I will be spending maybe five seconds on some teams and four minutes on others. It's, it's just the way it goes, okay? It's a long off season, so if I don't talk about your favorite team for a long time, I don't want to see no comments. We got plenty of time to talk about everybody. Also, let me know in the comment section who is the most intriguing player for your favorite team, your least favorite team, whatever the comment section is open. Today's video is brought to you by Shopify. Have you heard of Enjoy Basketball? If not, I don't know where you've been. It is the brand that I created a little bit over a year ago. We've dropped apparel like this hat, some hoodies, some shirts, and something coming up. We've even dropped mini hoops. Now, before I started it, I knew nothing about starting, growing, and managing a business, but that's when Shopify came in. Because they're all in one commerce platform, it's easy to use for everybody. Shopify believes in a future where commerce has more voices, and they're reducing the barriers to business ownership to make commerce better for everyone. They've empowered more entrepreneurs than anybody else in the world. We're talking millions of businesses over 175 different countries. They have so many tools that help you on your journey, like Shopify Learn. You get courses from some of the most successful business people in the world or like their affordable starter plan so quit messing around man we got a free trial for you if you go to shopify.com slash kot for q get out there use those resources and become empowered with shopify let's start off with the 76ers i think this is an easy one it's gonna be james Harden because james Harden holds the now and the future of the 76ers all up in his hands, all up in his trade requests. Got a report early today that the Clippers have been unserious in the conversations with James Harden. So is he gonna stay? And if that's the case, are they still contenders? Does he leave? If, if the package is gonna be good enough for them to be in contention? I don't really know. So what happens to him is the most intriguing thing about the 76ers, because as of right now, they haven't had a good offseason. For the Bucs, it is Chris Middleton. Of course, he signed that extension, and now we gotta figure out can he get back to the version of himself from last season or the year before that? Because, well, in the 30-ish games he played after the injury from the playoffs, he didn't really look like himself. The one silver lining is that in the playoffs, he was one of the brighter spots, and you hope that he continues to do that. But now you got the core of Giannis, Middleton, Holiday, Brooke Lopez. Everybody in there is pretty old. And you want to get a couple more rings, so you got to make them happen now. And part of that is having Chris Middleton be back to all-star level. The Chicago Bulls is Patrick Williams. I talked about him in a video a couple days ago, so if you want more Patrick Williams talk, go there. The Cavaliers is intriguing because what happens with Evan Mobley next really determines what happens with Jared Allen. So this is kind of like a connection, a two-for-one. Because if Mobley uses this offseason, puts on some more muscle or whatever, whatever, gets bigger, if you want to say that, and he's more transitioning to be that full-time five, what happens to Jared Allen? I think a lot of us believe that Evan Mobley is more of a five than a four down the line, but does it happen this offseason? Does it happen the next offseason? And that really puts Jared Allen up in limbo. For the Celtics, some of y'all might be thinking it's Jalen Brown, which I respect, but for me, it is Chris Stapps for his new opportunity, new space, and basically a new role for the majority of his career. He's been like the two option, and now he's relegated to like the three Will he be able to play well with Al Horford? Will he be able to play well with Robert Williams? And bigger than that, will he be able to stay healthy for another season? All of those things matter in the Celtics' goal of winning the championship. With the Clippers is Russell Westbrook. We saw that in the 20-something game sample size with the Clippers versus the Lakers, he was a more efficient player. He played better and that 20-something games and all of the Lakers games combined. And can he help them unlock the potential of them winning the ring because that's what they're there for. The Grizzlies is undoubtedly for me, Marcus Smart. Of course, John Moran's gonna be out for 25 games to start the season. Marcus Smart is gonna be that lead primary ball handler. And the real determinant factor, whether or not there's a good trade, bad trade, or whatever, is really dependent on if he's gonna be able to hit his three-point shots because they need spacing over there in Memphis when John Moran comes back. And you need that leadership with Marcus Smart. So can he help get that, that mature culture back with the Grizzlies. For the Atlanta Hawks, there are a ton of intriguing players on the team, but I think the most intriguing is DeAndre Hunter. He signed that uh, crazy extension a couple years ago, and he hasn't really lived up to the dollar value associated with his contract, and we're just waiting for the moment where he is that good 3 and D player, and he showed glimpses and things like that, but now John Collins is gone. There's more opportunities for pretty much everybody. This is the time where I expect DeAndre Hunter to play better, and will he do that? This is like 
I don't want to say make or break because he already got his money, but this is about as big of a make or break season that it can be for DeAndre Hunter. And that's not saying that he's about to be out of the league or something, but a, a, him being a part of the core, like there already was rumors about him potentially being traded, but him being a, car, a part of this core with Trey and DeJounte is up in the air with this season or the first whatever many games in the season before we get to the deadline. The Heat is Tyler Hero. I mean, will he be a Heat or will he not be? Like there's so many questions revolving around that. I think because... He missed the entire postseason or close to the entire postseason last season. A lot of people are down on Tyler Hero because the team made the run to the finals. Man, Tyler Hero is still such a good NBA player. And I think if somebody's going to unlock him even more once they trade for him. But the question is, will he be traded? Will the dang thing happen? Will it not? For the Hornets, it's Miles Bridges, man. He's uh, getting another opportunity in the league. And the last time he played the Lamella Ball, Miles Bridges connection was elite. I'm, well, okay. At least it's good. It was pretty, it was pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty good. And obviously they fell a lot after losing him and some other pieces. Now him being back, will he still have the same type of production? being a 20 point per game score after a year of not being in the league we're gonna see the jazz you know i like an old face to new places john collins goes over to utah it's he's not gonna have like enhanced opportunity right he's going from the atlanta hawks where he was the three fourth option and now he's kind of going back to a similar situation because the utah jazz i mean lowry's number one but after that's like this team basketball thing uh, Jordan Clarkson is probably going to get some shots, and it allows John Collins to potentially have a better year because his numbers have gone down and down and down. His shooter splits have gone down and down and down, and maybe Utah is the place where he can get back on track because once upon a time, John Collins was a super fun Super electric player for the Atlanta Hawks. Remember the, the playoff run when they got to the conference finals? John Collins was sitting in that chair. He was playing great defense. He was being effective offensively. And we haven't seen that version of him for some time. A lot of people think it's because of the finger. A lot of people think it's because of the finger. And I can't deny that. He can't shoot no more. For the Kings, it is Sasha Vidzikov. Uh, God. I'm going to hear it again, and I'm going to pronounce it right. But I have been diving a little bit to form, uh, form basketball over the last couple months, and he is a dude that can come into a team and drop 20 without dribbling the ball. And without dribbling the ball. And I like that kind of thing with the Sacramento Kings. What kind of role will he play his first year in the NBA? I don't know. But as a tall dude who can catch and shoot and, and go off those curls with DeMontis Sabonis as a passer or De'Aaron Fox as a passer, I think he can fit in really well. It's just a matter of what level player will he be at the NBA level. But I am so excited to see him in the NBA. For the Knicks, it's undoubtedly for me, RJ Barrett. The first couple games in the playoffs last year, he was dreadful. Had a lot of people questioning him as a player and stuff after having a down season in the regular, uh, regular season as well. And then the last couple games after those first two, the, the rest of the playoffs, he, he was really good. And you want to see that version of him in the 80-plus game season, plus the postseason this year. Of course, a few years ago, he had the year where he shot 40% from three. Then they got to the playoffs, and the opposing team's like, no, we don't trust that. You want him to develop that three-point shot again and become like a genuine three-point shooter that is trusted around the league. So it opens up the game more for JV. It opens up the game more for Randall. But you want to see that playoff version of RJ again. For the Lakers, it's got to be Anthony Davis. We had that month stretch last year where he was a top five player in basketball. We've been waiting for the time for LeBron James to pass the torch to Anthony Davis to be the best player on the Lakers, to be an MVP candidate, to be a DPOY candidate. This, if it's not this year, Anthony, if we don't get you in MVP conversations this year, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. If we get that version of AD, that, that month, that month stretch all season long, Undoubtedly, he's going to be in conversations. I think the Lakers had a really good offseason as well, so the team should be better than the seventh seed this year. He should be a DPOI candidate because he was really, really good defensively uh, for his entire career, but definitely last year as well. We need that, but to the highest power, which is basically games played. There's no more intriguing player going into this season to me than Franz Wagner. We've talked about him a little bit uh, over the last couple videos, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But if there's any year three guy that I'm expecting to elevate his game, it is Franz Wagner, man. Um, he is a crazy guy when it comes again to the rim. He's a good one of the few good three point shooters on the Orlando Magic, and I'm ready for him to like just hit that next step. He averaged 18 last year. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the 20s, um, maybe low 20s, mid 20s. He has that type of talent. One of my favorite role players in the NBA is Josh Green. 
And now he's going to get a bigger role because of the people that they lost and because of the direction of the team. They're going to need somebody that's a little bit rangy defensively. So I'm expecting his minutes to go up a ton. Last year, he was a 40% three-point shooter. And if he can replicate that with Luka and Kyrie Irvin as the creators, they also got Grant Williams, who might be starting, should be starting, which is pretty fun. But I think that the most intriguing player is Josh Green. The Nets, it's Ben Simmons. I, I, I still want to see what's happening. We're getting the reports about him finally being 100% healthy. And now we want to see it on the court, man. The Nuggets lost some key contributors. They lost basically their sixth man and their seventh man with uh, Bruce Brown going to the Pacers and Jeff Green going to the Rockets. So because of that, you need that those young guys, the Christian Browns, the Julian Strothers, is Zeke Nagy ever going to hit the next step? I was excited about Zeke Nagy last year. He didn't really play. This is a Christian Brown, all right, we need you to turn into more than what you were last season. And he was pretty good last season, as we saw in the finals. But he needs to, to fulfill the shoes of what Brucey was doing last year. Pacers, old face, new place. It's Obi Toppin. It's Obi Toppin. Lottery pick a few years ago. Again, if you want to look back on that draft and look at picks like 4 through 10, a lot of those dudes aren't having great NBA careers so far. Obi Toppin has an opportunity in Indiana to raise who he is as a player. Um, last year, I was really excited about Jalen Smith, and now that's kind of gone, and now it's just transition to Obi Toppin now. Pels, I've watched Larry Nance interviews. I've watched interviews from uh, coaches within the Pelicans organization. There's nobody that they're higher on than Trey Murphy. We saw so many great things from him last year. They got a lot going on between Z, hopefully, being healthy, and Brandon Ingram also as a wing. Like, does Trey Murphy ever really start? I don't know, but the dude is an absolute stud. And I'm expecting him. I think he averaged like 14 points per game last season. I'm expecting him to be better than that. The Pistons is Killian Hayes. This is uh, the last season for you, Killian. That's what I'm expecting. I know there were some rumors about him being a contract extension, conversations with the Pistons. I don't really know. But it feels like the make or break season. Now, I don't expect you to go out there and become the number one player in the draft like Kevin O'Connor had it. But you got to make yourself worthy because, man, they just drafted um, Kate Cunningham. And then they drafted uh, Jay Nivey. And then they drafted the Thompson brother. Those are guards. Killian. If, if you want to make a, a name for yourself, you want to stay in this league a little bit longer, this has to be the year for it. Scotty Barnes had a, a down season compared to his rookie year, obviously winning rookie of the year. Um, and this is the year with no real point guard other than Dennis Schroeder on the roster. This is the year where uh, point Scotty is probably going to be in full effect. And though they haven't done much to address the, the lack of shooting, the lack of three-point ball to open a game up for Pascal or Scotty, I really do believe that Scotty as the lead point guard should be pretty fun. They got the new coach. They got Darko in there. New coach Darko, who's all about player movement and fluidity fluidity when it comes to offense. So, Scotty is that initi initiator. It's something I'm excited about. Jalen Green, it's the time. I feel like a lot of people are down on Jalen Green because of his first couple years of his career. Oh, he's just a guy that has a lot of opportunities, so he gets a lot of jump shots or whatever. whatever. That's BS. Now he finally has a genuine point guard next to him. Not saying that Fred Van Vliet is the greatest passer of all time, but he's definitely a dude that gets you into your stuff. He finally has got some, some locker room dudes and Jeff Green and say what you want to say about Dylan Brooks. He kind of fits in that as well. And I'm expecting Jalen Green to showcase to the world that I'm more than just a 20 point per game player on a really, really, really bad team. Now is the time to show that because I've been seeing him in conversations with players that I believe are inferior to him on the basketball court just because people aren't really tuned in to the Houston Rockets, which is understandable, and they haven't really seen the things that I have seen. Spurs is hard to say, um, and it's, it's Victor Wimanyama, but like, you know that. So I'll go another route and say Malachi Branham, another guy similar to Trey Murphy, where everybody that talks about the Spurs, everybody in the Spurs organization really loves Malachi Branham. They said not only is he going to be a starter in this league, but he's got potential to be a lot more than that. So as a guy that did a watch a ton of Spurs last year, I kind of missed out on those flashes. I saw it a little bit in Summer League, and I'm excited now that I'm here for Wimby to see more Malachi Branham, to see what those people are seeing. With the Suns, is DeAndre Ayton. The first couple years of DeAndre Ayton's career, he had the luxury of playing with Ricky Rubio, one of the better passers in his last decade. And then, of course, Chris Paul came in, and he got to play with maybe the best passing point guard in the last 20 years. I don't know. Whatever. Now he doesn't have that. And I'm curious what happens to his game now that we, we have this playmaking by committee between Bradley Beal, 
Devin Booker and Kevin Durant? Does his touches go down because he doesn't have a guy that's finding him on a regular? Does he become even better because he's not really pressured to be the pick and roll partner with Chris Paul? I don't really know, but I'm excited to see what happens. I saw his interview from a couple days ago. We said everybody's down on him. Everybody hates him. And I'm ready for him to be like, shut up. I was the first overall pick. Yeah, over Luka, over Trey Young and all of that. And I might not be on their levels. But I want to showcase to the world why I was the number one overall pick and make them think like, okay, it wasn't that bad of an idea. It's going to be hard to do because uh, have you seen Luka Doncic play basketball? It's going to be hard. Okay, see his chat. From what I saw in Summer League, he has the opportunity to be a top 10 defender in the league as a rookie, and that's with his thin frame and everything. The OKC Thunder were a surprisingly decent defensive team last year, and that's without really any rim protection, and now they have that on the back end. Like, I'm excited about OKC, but more excited about Chet's ability to maybe transform the game from the roster defensively. Wolves has got to be uh, Jaden McDaniels, man. I, uh, man, I was so... Maybe not disappointed might not might not be the right word, but I was so as as a fan that be watching him ready for the playoffs. I was sad to see that he hurt his hand, um, and he wasn't able to play. I feel like when it comes to a player like Jaden McDaniels being able to do it on the playoff stage, and I'm talking about his defense, elevates him to a whole nother level amongst NBA fandom. Like I believe that he deserved to be all defensive. But because he's such a newer player when it comes to this all defensive stuff, uh, maybe a lot of people haven't had eyes on him, right? So usually you go to the playoffs, you be like, oh man, that guy's actually good. And the next year is the year where you get your yeah, all defensive team, your all NBA teams, or whatever. And he didn't get that luxury, but I'm excited to see him again this year. The Blazers have um, Scoop Henderson, they have Shaden Sharp, and they also have Anthony Simons, who feels like he's kind of <laughs> he's kind of forgotten right now when it comes to that core. Again, maybe because he might get shipped because uh, Dame might get shipped, but. It's still intriguing to see how he's going to fit along those dudes because I believe if we're trading Damian Lillard, which seems like it might be a thing, it most likely will be a thing, you think that Scoot and Sharp is your backcourt, Anthony Simon's got to be in there as well, and I know they probably give up a ton of points, 100,000 points per game, but this is the first year of a rebuild, so who cares? The Warriors, it's Chris Paul. Will he accept the role of coming off the bench if Steve Kerr says that's the way? Um, how will he adjust to not being... The dribble, 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 well, he's still going to be the dribble, dribble, dribble guy. But, like, there's so much fluidity with the way the Warriors play basketball. Uh, he's always been the number one supreme playmakers on his team. He's never really played with a player like Draymond Green or Steph Curry when it comes to the playmaking tips. So will he be able to delegate some of that responsibilities? It's probably better for his career so his body can kind of stay intact come playoff time. But I'm excited to see how they use Chris Paul because he's a dude that has been such ISO heavy, even though I know he can do the other stuff. I watched an interview with him a little while ago when people were asking about that. He was like, I play that game because that's what people want me to play. But I could pretty much play the game of basketball anyway. I'm that talented. I'm that good at the game. And I trust that. And now we're about to see that version of him, maybe. But the Wizards is Jordan Poole. Let's be real. Jordan Poole might average 28 points per game or something. He's going to get a lot of shots up. I mean, he was averaging 20 plus points off the bench for the Warriors. So he's going to get a lot of shots up. He's going to hit some. He's going to miss some. But it's going to be funny to see him and Kyle Kuzma kind of going 25 shots per game each. I also like Demi Abdi, another, another year four guy. Um, that I'm expecting to play more minutes and be more impactful. All right, that's all 30 teams. I, I, I mean, I'm going to break down a little bit more over the offseason, but if you enjoyed it, leave it a like, and I'll see y'all in a couple days.